Hello, everybody. Good morning. Happy Friday. It is so good to connect in with all of you. I'm going to make sure that our tech is working, that you guys can see and hear me. And we'll kick off. Morning. Happy Friday. Looks like we are good to go. So welcome to our class. This is all about the aromatic use of essential oils. I am so glad that you guys are all here. Welcome. We've had a lot of new people getting started with us in our group, and it is so nice to connect in with all of you. I'm so excited that you're here. A quick welcome for those of you that I'm new to. I'm Dr. Laura Ritchie. I'm a doctor of physical therapy and national board certified health and wellness coach specializing in functional nutrition, women's health and insulin resistance, and I'm an essential oil educator and platinum team leader with doTERRA International. We have a global oils family, so I love to connect with you guys virtually. Good morning, good morning. So good to see you guys popping on. Thank you for being here, and if you're watching the replay, welcome to the replay. We have a giveaway for a US viewer that is watching the class. So stay tuned, we'll go through all of the details on that and how to win. But we are going to dive into this education. This is gonna be a really fun class. We did a class on internal use of essential oils, topical use of essential oils. We have to finish up with our aromatic use of essential oils. Oh, it's so great to see you guys. Oh, wow, from Italy. See, we have a global oils family. It's pretty awesome to see all of you guys jumping in and we have a couple people watching on Zoom as well. So this is really exciting. Well, let me share my slides and we will kick off and get started. So here we go. This is our aromatic use of essential oils class. And very quickly before we begin, we always start with a medical disclaimer that this information, it's not intended to replace a one-on-one -on -one relationship with your qualified healthcare professional. It's not intended as medical advice. This is really a sharing of my own knowledge and information and research and education and training that I've done. And I really encourage you to work with your qualified healthcare professional and you guys work together to do what works best for your health and wellness. So really quickly, if you're new to following me, this is my journey, how I got into this. Again, my doctor is in physical therapy. That is my background. And I actually got really sick with a sarcoma in 2011, a very rare sarcoma, also known as a desmoid tumor. And that you can see in the CT scan there and the tumor up above, it was the size of a softball, was surgically removed. And I went through a lot of surgeries. They put synthetic mesh in my abdomen, which herniated. So that's actually the bottom picture. The bottom left is a year after that tumor was removed and the mesh herniated and I had a very large painful hernia. And then had actually four surgeries all related to this. The last of which you can see on the bottom right was a complete reconstruction of my abdominal wall. Really big surgery, had drains coming out of me for two weeks after that that you can see there. And then found out that I was diagnosed with adult hip dysplasia. So I had some very major surgeries to basically build me a new hip joint out of my existing joint and then was diagnosed with chronic Lyme disease in 2015. So I share this with you to let you know that I've been on both sides as a practitioner and then also as a patient. It's much different when you are the patient, but this is the journey, a lot of surgeries, a lot of challenges and hardships that led me to learning more about functional nutrition and natural remedies like essential oils. And to show you that top picture, just changing my diet, that alone reduced the amount of rashes. That's a Bartonella rash. It's a co-infection of Lyme that was causing this. So this is a huge improvement that I noticed and I went looking for answers and that's what led me down this path. So let's talk about oils aromatically. Why would you want to use essential oils aromatically? Well, they're actually really uplifting. They're relaxing. They can purify the air so they can support your mood. It's really convenient and simple way to use your essential oils. Even if you don't have a lot of experience with essential oils, you can get started using them aromatically right away. They can help to promote a calm, stable environment for your home. Again, purifying and cleansing the air. We know that our inside air is actually more toxic than the air outside. So things that we can do to reduce our toxic load is really going to help with our mood, with our hormonal health, so many things. And I would really encourage you, if you haven't seen the documentary Stink, 
It's on Netflix. Go and watch that if you want to dive more into what is in our fragrances, synthetic fragrances, endocrine disruptors. It's a really, really good documentary. And then this is also going to help to manage your mood and your emotions, which is really powerful. So not only can we reduce our toxic load and get rid of the nasty plugins and air fresheners and things that are actually harming our health, but this can actually provide us with emotional support and help as well. So there's historical use of aromatherapy. We know that this has been around for hundreds of thousands of years in ancient Roman Greece and India. They were actually frequently used in religious rituals and practices. It was discovered that essential oils can actually increase influence our feelings and uplift our mood. And research in the 1990s helped biologists understand how simply inhaling the scent of an essential oil could cause specific chemical sensors in the body to react, having a, in a significant effect on emotion, mood, and atmosphere. So this is really cool that something so simple can have such a big impact on our health and on our wellness. So we're going to dive in a little bit more and talk about how this works because we know that essential oils contain chemical properties that have been shown to promote relaxing feelings and calming atmosphere and this ability to soothe anxious feelings when we use them aromatically. So we really can use essential oils to help us with mood management. And we think of things like lemon or the citrus oils that can be really uplifting. Things like lavender can be very calming to our system. Frankincense can be very renewing. Peppermint can be very energizing or a lot of the mint oils. And then something like myrrh can be very soothing. And we'll dive deeper into this and the chemical compounds and what that looks like. So when we're using essential oils for mood, each oil has a different chemical makeup and every person has different emotions and memories and even reactions within the brain when inhaling an oil. And each person is going to experience something a little bit different. So this is really powerful in knowing that it's, there's a little bit of bioindividuality and you guys hear me talk about this a lot with essential oils that each oil is different, each person is different, and their response may be a little bit different. And we'll also talk about when you're inhaling an essential oil, how it can bring up an emotional component for you. So each person's gonna notice something a little bit different, and that's what I love about it. There's some wiggle room for play and to individualize it specifically for you and for your needs and what's going on. So aromatic use. And this is really powerful because the oils can purify the air. And this is an important thing for our health and for our wellness to eliminate any unwanted odors. You know, so many times people are grabbing the Febreze or the air fresheners, the Glade plugins or things, and it's just masking the odor, right? We're just now throwing synthetic fragrance up into the air that we're now inhaling. That's really hard on our respiratory system and our hormonal system and has a lot of harmful toxins and chemicals. So our essential oils can actually give us a safe, natural way to purify the air in the rooms without having to inhale those harmful toxins and synthetic fragrances. So I always give the example of hotel rooms or maybe rental cars. If you're really sensitive, to synthetic fragrances, or maybe you've done a lot in your life to detoxify from those synthetic fragrances, it's something that you can notice really quickly. Let me know if you guys are sensitive like me. I'm one of those people that if I walk down the cleaning aisle of a grocery store, I can get a migraine or a headache or even walking into a Bath and Body Works or smelling synthetic candles or fragrances or sometimes perfume. That can really have an effect on our endocrine system, on affecting our body as a whole, respiratory system, all of that. We think about our toxic cleaners and how we wouldn't let our kids near them, but we're having to kind of hold our breath when cleaning. So the more that we can do to purify, to go back to nature, to keep it simple, is a really, really powerful way and tool that we can support our health and wellness. And then also for improving our mood management, right? The emotional support, and we'll dive deeper into this, but this has traditionally been used and it can actually stabilize our emotions can calm anxious feelings, can really encourage motivation or relaxation because of the way that this is set up and we'll dive deeper. So 
aromatic, when we're talking about the word aromatic, we're just talking about that it emits a distinct, potent, or pleasant smell. So we're inhaling that. And that aromatic use of essential oils can benefit from these natural properties of the oils by way of breathing in and inhaling that aroma, either right out of the bottle or using a diffuser. So the aromatic use is typically achieved by diffusing and we have, have my diffuser going right here, or just again, straight inhaling that oil from a bottle of essential oil or a roller to uplift your mood. And it's nice that we have tools that can support us with the emotional side of things. Okay, now this is really important when we talk about this. So when I'm talking about aromatic use of essential oils, please know that I'm talking about doTERRA. You can actually go to source and there is a little code at the bottom of your bottle of oil that you can type in and you can see the exact testing analysis for your batch of oil. I don't know any other company that is offering that amount of transparency with what is in that bottle of oil. So you can see there, you can go and actually click on the quality reports from a third party lab that is testing that. And this is important because there's a lot of fake oils out there. So with doTERRA's oils, 54 tests are completed on each sample. There's a ton listed right there on that slide for you. 43 are done in-house through doTERRA's labs, and then 11 are actually done through third-party testing. doTERRA partners with APRC, Aromatic Plant Research Center, to do the testing on those bottles of oil. And safety really matters. This is an important thing to have on hand that not all essential oils are created equally with this. And really, when we think about it, oils have their own chemical makeup and benefits that we're doing, and they react with the body in their own way. So everything from the way that that oil is harvested and produced to the testing, to even what's happening with that, with growing the soil, that all can be can change based off of the distributor. So some oils are pure and thoroughly tested, like doTERRA's are. Others don't. They have fillers, preservatives, impurities that lower the quality of that oil, and they actually make it unsafe for topical or internal use. And I would even argue unsafe for aromatic use with that because again what we're inhaling is going to go into our lungs into our brain into our bloodstream so a lot of this stuff and, and this is just important i don't want you to take the information that you learn from this class and think that it would apply to an oil that you purchase at the grocery store or even the health food store because i think of those as synthetic fragrances those are a synthetic perfume i wouldn't even really call it an essential oil so there's a big difference there with what's going on and quality and purity. And I think it's important to let you know that that quality really, really does matter. So as an example, this is what I would call a fake oil. <laughs> this is something that I got from a department store and there is no governing agency that's regulating this. So what happens is they can put whatever they want on that package or bottle of oil because again, nobody is regulating that at all. So this says that it's 100% pure. It says that it has this aroma profile that's gonna help you. But when you actually read more closely, it actually talks about how it contains some things that can cause skin irritation, eye damage, skin reactions, maybe fatal if swallowed or enters the airway. These are concerning things written on here for me. And so again, this is why not all essential oils are created equally. This is what I would call more of a synthetic fragrance, not really a therapeutic grade essential oil, something that you would see that is more going to make a benefit and an impact on your health. So all important things to just consider when looking at it, that they're not all the same. And that's a really important thing to just be aware of with this. So we're gonna dive in and we're gonna talk about how does this affect us, right? The brain, the body connection, that sense of smell, how can that affect how we're feeling? And that sense of smell can actually produce mental, emotional, and physiological responses in the body. And the essential oils, they're actually able to disperse throughout the air very quickly in that. 
And again, they're volatile. So you'll hear us say that an essential oil is a volatile aromatic compound that just means that it has an ability to change state quickly and it can interact with chemical sensors, the olfactory sensors in the brain that creates a response that can actually impact our mood and our emotions with that. So the olfactory system of the brain, it regulates sense of smell and it's connected to the limbic system. This is really important and this is why I feel like our bodies are so divinely created. It's so interesting how everything is interconnected, but the limbic system is what houses our emotions and our memories. So this is why when you smell something, it can remind you of a memory. It could be a good memory or a bad memory from your past because that scent travels through the nose to the olfactory system where it is processed, it travels through the olfactory nerve to that limbic system. So that scent can trigger responses in the brain based on memories and experiences that you have had. So you can experience benefits of a scent quickly and conveniently with that. This is why kind of in an instant when you inhale an essential oil, it can impact your mood. So they're easily inhaled, they're absorbed through your respiratory tract and the lungs, and then it's circulated throughout the bloodstream. So this is why quality and purity really does matter. And we don't wanna be using a perfume or synthetic fragrance, but a therapeutic grade oil with this. And again, I love this image because it shows you that just how powerful our sense of smell is, how powerful the essential oils are, and how it basically does a dance through your neuroanatomy, if you will, and how that affects the brain, how you see that going in through the olfactory bulb and the nasal cavity and the aromatic substances with this and the olfactory neurons. All of this is a really, really powerful tool and way that we can use these oils. Ooh. So the olfactory system, again, it's what regulates that sense of smell and it's connected to the limbic system in our brain, those emotions and those memories. It's traveling up through and this is a really convenient way that you get a response in the brain and it affects those memories and you can actually experience benefits of a scent really quickly and conveniently. So it's easily inhaled, it's going up into your system and it can cause reactions in the brain that cause these physiological reactions that can actually alter and improve our mood. It's really neat how the neuroanatomy and the science affects one another, but basically when we inhale that, it's a direct link into our central nervous system, which is a really powerful tool that can help us because we know if we're in a stressed out state, it's going to be harder for the body to heal. And we know that stress in general, we really need to have tools to support us with that and help us when going through things with everyday life. So how does an oil provide calming, uplifting, or energizing feelings for us there? It's due again to that chemical makeup of the essential oils. And most oils can be classified as uplifting or calming when we think about that. The chemical structure of plants and essential oils actually allows them to provide specific mood altering properties. And we can really zero in on that and adjust accordingly as needed. So the mint oils, for example, those are commonly known to be uplifting and energizing because they have a high concentration of ketones. The floral oils, so things like lavender and rose, these are typically composed of monoterpene alcohols, which provide calming characteristics. So again, we often think of lavender as the all things calm oil to have there trees, herbs, and grass. These are primarily include sesquiterpenes, oxides, and esters. And these are gonna promote more of a soothing, grounding emotional response and feelings of renewal with that. Our citrus oils, we love our citrus oils, right? Things like wild orange and lemon and lime. These contain chemical components like beta-pinene, the monoterpenes, and limonene, which contain significant uplifting characteristics. So I think of the citrus oils, those are the happy oils. They boost our mood and support us. And then the spice oils have phenols and they provide a warming property. So very nice kind of, I think of more of the fall scents, kind of that spicy warming aromatic scent. 
So here's a little bit of research for you if you like to get nerdy like I do. And I went on PubMed. You can go to PubMed and search. And there's actually a lot of interesting research on aromatherapy and essential oils. So this was one in particular with lavender essential oil and how it actually helped to improve restful sleep. It helped to decrease anxiety, anxious feelings with patients. So that was pretty interesting. And I know a lot of people may struggle with sleep or anxious feelings, and this is a great way to support yourself. Here's another study. This was on lavender inhalation and the level of anxious feelings and even looking at the blood cortisol in candidates that were actually having open heart surgery. So this is a major surgery, right? People could get anxious feelings around that. When we are feeling stressed out, it actually increases cortisol, which is a stress hormone in our blood. So they actually measured that and was seeing that there was a positive effect with lavender and inhaling lavender essential oil and helping with those anxious feelings and supporting those, those patients. So that's kind of a neat intervention. And we see more and more hospitals and medical facilities are starting to integrate essential oils into their practice because it's something that is safe and is effective and can help their patients. Here's another really interesting one. This is the effect of aromatherapy with the essential oil of orange. So think of wild orange essential oil, and this was on pain and vital signs of patients with fractured limbs that were actually admitted into the emergency ward. And what they found here was that aromatherapy with wild orange oil, right, or citrus oils, that this can be a really complementary thing to help with discomfort and aches. And this was even with fractured limbs, which is really wild. So this is something where aromatherapy can really help to support patients when they may be going through some challenges like that. Here's another one. So this is the effect of lemon aromatherapy inhalation. And this is actually to support women during pregnancy. So we know that pregnancy can really um, cause a lot of nauseous feelings, right? Not feeling so great. And that lemon scent can actually be really effective in helping to relieve some of those nauseous feelings during pregnancy, which is really interesting. And then there was a, another study on aromatherapy for post-operative nausea. So this I actually noticed helped me a ton personally with going through a lot of surgeries is I was one of those people that is very, very sensitive to anesthesia and I would wake up in the recovery room and get sick. And so this was really helpful for me that I noticed when I had the oils and just the aromatherapy, just inhaling right out of the bottle was a really powerful way that I could get support and not feel that way, which was really neat. And I love that the research is showing that as well. So let's talk about diffusers because this is an important thing to address too, that it actually, what the diffuser does is it takes an oil and it transforms it into a fine microscopic mist of oil droplets that we have there. And that disperses the oil and the scent throughout the air and it allows you to enjoy the aroma of an essential oil for an extended period of time. And this is a really simple way to use your essential oils aromatically. I actually feel like you're not getting the full benefit of essential oils if you don't have a diffuser and are able to experience that. So one of my new sweet oilers, she got started with oils and she was diffusing in her home. And she actually stopped for a little bit and noticed that she felt different and told me, wow, Laura, when I stopped diffusing and I wasn't doing that as often, I could tell a big difference in my mood. And part of that is because of this impact in our central nervous system. And it's just a really powerful, neat tool. So a diffuser is a great way, again, for respiratory support, emotional support, but also just cleansing and purifying the air in your home, which I think is a really important thing for us to be doing. So when choosing a diffuser, you really need to look at what are your needs? Is it going to be a far reaching mist? What is, is it going to be compact? What is the space? What is the size of a diffuser that you're looking for in that? Does it have any timer settings? Is it one that runs continuous or is it intermittent where it'll go on for a period of time and then turn off? 
Is it a long running diffuser? How, much, how many hours is it running for? And you wanna avoid diffusers that use heat as it could change that chemical structure of the essential oil. We don't wanna do that. So where do you wanna put a diffuser? We wanna enjoy the scent and it's something that can really help to improve our mood, to purify the air. So think of things around your home, like where would you need that type of support? So this could be in the bedrooms. We have diffusers in the bedrooms to help with restful sleep. We have them in my office. This is my office right here. And I do that to really just help with supporting energy and focus when I'm doing work. I have one in my kitchen as well. So maybe if you cook, you know, maybe sometimes you're cooking salmon or something that might smell a little interesting. You can have your oils going to really support and help with that and just cleanse and purify the air again in a living room or any central area of the room. And this is where I like to diffuse something like wild orange and peppermint, any of the citruses and the mints because they're very uplifting and energizing to get you going in the morning. And maybe in the evening you do something like lavender or serenity, something that's a little bit more calming. And it's really interesting how just diffusing oils can impact people's mood and how they're feeling. And I think that's a powerful, powerful tool. So diffuser maintenance. We do wanna take care of our diffusers. They will last longer when you are taking good care of your diffusers and having them on hand, right? So you wanna avoid placing your diffuser in direct sunlight or near fan. You wanna clean the diffuser regularly, and that's gonna be according to the manufacturer's instructions, and do a really good deep clean at least once a month. This is going to prolong the life of your diffuser, which is really going to be helpful when you take care of your diffusers, and if you have a high quality diffuser, it should last you for years and years. So you wanna use a natural cleaning agent like water and vinegar, something like that. I also love to use the essential oils too, like lemon essential oil, for example, that's a really nice natural goo gone that can help with that. And then you want to also make sure unplug your diffuser before cleaning it. That's important too. So how to clean your diffuser. You're going to turn it off. You're going to unplug it. You're going to fill that water reservoir about halfway to the line with clean water and then you're going to add some white vinegar to the fill line. So I usually do about half and half, half water, half white vinegar, and then do a couple drops of lemon essential oil. You're going to turn it on, plug it back in and turn it on, let it run for three, five minutes to really clean it from the inside out, drain the water out, let that empty, and then just wipe down. There's the little ultrasonic mist chip that's probably going to be in the center of your diffuser. So you can take a little cotton swab, with a little bit of white vinegar and just gently wipe down the edges of that. And then just rinse with clean water. You can wipe with a cloth. If you have any visible residue that's going on, a little bit of lemon essential oil in a cloth will help to clean that up for you. And then I don't know if you guys follow Keely Martinez, but she is over on Instagram and Facebook at Essentially Obsessed. And she had this great tip for a quick, simple way for cleaning your diffusers where she makes a spray. So she actually, you can either save your empty on guard hand sanitizing spray bottles or purchase these little spray bottles from doTERRA. And inside them, she puts a tablespoon of white vinegar in the little bottle with about 10 drops of lemon essential oil and then just top with water. And so she shakes it and just sprays down and just wipes with a cloth. So I love this because you can keep your spray near your diffusers and whenever you're thinking about it or if you notice that it's starting to get some buildup or residue around there, you can clean it. You can do that once a week and then do the major diffuser clean that we just talked about previously, do that once a month. And that could be a really powerful way to keep your diffusers clean and working really well for you. And safety is really important. Again, there's many factors involved with aromatic use of essential oils. It depends on the size of the room, the output of the diffuser, the, the nature of the air in the room, what's going on. So there's not really specific recommendations made for dosage on aromatic use of the oils, like what we have for topical use or internal use that we talked about in our previous classes. So moderation is best. 
and do what you feel best with. You know, the amount of oil that you use in a diffuser is just going to, again, depend on the size of the room, the proximity of the person to the diffuser. So for example, I will usually diffuse about four drops of an essential oil. Again, doTERRA's oils are very pure. They're therapeutic grade. A little goes a long ways because they are very concentrated. So I believe a little goes a long ways with this. And start with less because you can always add more if you want it stronger. But it is a little bit of a choose your own adventure. So I have some oilers that will actually put 10 drops of an essential oil in their diffuser. That's a little much for me. That would be a little strong, but they may want it a little bit more strong. So this is going to vary person to person. Again, the oils are very concentrated and potent. And then there is that emotional component, right, that can come up when we are using oils. So this is kind of interesting. Let me stop my stop sharing for just a moment. So a really fascinating thing about using the essential oils is it can bring up the emotional component as we talked about a little bit. And so when we're inhaling an essential oil, if there's a smell that you do not like, if you smell an oil and you're just really turned off by it and you think, oh, that just doesn't resonate with me, what I would really, really strongly encourage you to do is get the book Emotions and Essential Oils. And you can get the actual book from Share Oils, or you can purchase the Kindle version on Amazon. I love the Kindle version because I like to have it on my phone. And look up what the emotional component is of that oil, and it may surprise you. I Nine times out of 10, it really does resonate with people. So if you're not enjoying the smell of an oil, and it resonates with you, bringing up an emotional component, my recommendation would be to make yourself a roller bottle and maybe put one to two drops of that oil in a 10 ml roller bottle and top with fractionated coconut oil and apply to the bottoms of your feet and then put socks and shoes on so you don't even have to smell it. And do that for a week and then come back and revisit that and just notice how that smell is and if it maybe doesn't bother you as much as it did in the past. It's so interesting. And this book goes into a lot of detail on it. If you read the story in the beginning of the book, it's a really powerful one. But this is where the oils don't do the emotional work for us, but they help us to process through some of that. So the example the book gives is if you were out in your garden and you were pulling weeds, it could be very hard to pull weeds out completely by the root if the soil is very dry. But if you water that soil, it's going to be much easier to pull it out. So the essential oils can help us on that emotional component to, in essence, water our garden and us do the work of journaling, maybe counseling, maybe talking through some of these things, doing what we need to to process that. The book also can come with, you can purchase the wheel. There's an emotions and essential oils wheel that has positive properties. So if you want to feel a positive feeling, you can go to this wheel and it'll give you an essential oil recommendations that can help move you to that emotion. Or if you are feeling a negative emotion, you can look that up and then see the recommend the recommended oils to help you move to a more positive emotion. So I like that it's got some tools and some resources there. But again, I cannot tell you how many times this has happened in our oils family where somebody really doesn't like the scent of an essential oil. We look it up for them in the emotions and essential oils book and it resonates with them. I've had people in tears call me and say, Laura, you touched on the one area in my life that I'm working on right now and we're just blown away. So there is something to that. And again, I think this is the deeper piece of our healing journey where we're mind, body, soul, spirit, people, and working in all of those areas to support our health and wellness. Not only reducing our toxic load, having these natural remedies and solutions that may help with, with sleep or aches and discomfort, digestive issues, but also the emotional piece. And I came to doTERRA and essential oils from a need a need that I was hurting and really struggling with a lot of health challenges. So for the physical stuff, but it's actually been the emotional piece that has become my favorite, favorite way to use the essential oils and has been so powerful. Okay, so we'll go back. We'll share the screen again. 
So how can you make a really great diffuser blend? This is a question that I get asked a lot. And I think, again, it's bioindividuality and it's seeing what works for your needs and what resonates. But what are you looking for? Are you wanting some relaxation? Are you wanting something more invigorating? Do you want more of a calming environment? This is going to help you choose your oils and know which one to kind of go with. And then you can look at a group of oils and see which ones fit that description. So over in our Learning with Dr. Laura Facebook group, I have uploaded these oil property wheels from doTERRA. And so you can use the property wheel to find the oil that fits your desired outcome. And you can choose oils based off of this that are going to pair together and work well together. So this is where you can really make it individualized and find what works best for your specific needs. So by pairing the essential oils, that's one option where you have oils that are in the same type or category and those usually pair very nicely together an example of this is the citrus oils usually pair very nicely together like lemon and grapefruit or bergamot they're going to fall within the same category and those are going to pair very nicely together or you can do a variety by pairing essential oils that are in different categories together to make a really unique blend that highlights the best attributes of each of those oils. So I would encourage you to have fun with this. Look at the wheel, see which areas you would really like to work on. Maybe you're wanting more soothing or maybe you're wanting more energizing or uplifting, and you can make and play with creating your own diffuser blends that you love. So use those charts, you can download them and use those as a goal to help you. And kind of a guide too, when looking at the different categories is mint oils, they blend really well with woody, herbaceous, earthy, and citrus oils. The floral oils, they're gonna blend well with woody, spicy, and citrus oils. The herbaceous essential oils, they're going to blend well with woody and mint oils. Spicy oils blend well with those woody floral and citrus oils. And citrus oils blend really nicely with woody, spicy, floral, and mint oils. So you can play with those and find which one you like. For example, I really love the combination of lavender and wild orange for calming and for restful sleep, but I may do peppermint and wild orange to be very energizing and uplifting in the morning time and do lavender and wild orange at night. So based off of how you feel and what your desired outcome is, you can pair those oils and use them in that way. So you can diffuse oils during exercise. This would be a great way to use your essential oils aromatically. You can spray on clothing for a really nice, pleasant scent throughout the day, or just to get rid of the perfumes. Honestly, if you're going to do one thing for your health and wellness, getting rid of the perfumes and the synthetic fragrances would be a huge, huge step in the right direction and in reducing your toxic load. You can add one to two drops of essential oils to a homemade surface cleaner. So I personally love the On Guard Cleaner Concentrate, and I like to add extra drops of On Guard essential oil and peppermint essential oil, but you could even add, maybe you love spearmint. You can add spearmint essential oil to that to really make it a fun scent that resonates with you. You can apply an essential oil to a cotton ball and place that in the air vents of your car or on a little wooden clothespin and clip it there to diffuse or have a car diffuser with you on road trips. That's gonna be a great way to use the oils for support. You can diffuse them in your bedroom for restful sleep. Lavender and Breathe essential oil is actually a great diffuser blending combo, especially if you have somebody who's a noisy sleeper and snores. So that might be a good one because it's helping with that respiratory support and also the lavender for the calming. You can diffuse oils while studying for a test or maybe during your work to really help with focus and motivation. Again, I keep a diffuser here in my office to really support me while working. You can do a palm inhale. This is one of my favorites. So you can either do a couple drops of the essential oil out of the bottle, or if you have a roller, just roll that essential oil on your hand, rub together, kind of heats it up a little bit with your body heat. And then cup hands over mouth and nose and do a slow, deep inhale. You can take like three big, deep breaths. If you guys have oils nearby, do this with me. 
And this is a great way to support yourself and your health. And again, when you're just feeling stuck, right? Maybe you are feeling in a funk or you're feeling stuck or whatever that looks like, you can grab your essential oils and inhale and that's going to support you. You can mix essential oil and water in a spray bottle and do a spritz, right? So you can do a lemon spray. You can do this as an air freshener to get rid of the toxic ones, to spray down your furniture, your carpet, your linens, anything like that that you want to use. You can diffuse essential oils when you're expecting company to come over. One of my favorite oils to diffuse when company's coming over is Citrus Bliss. I love, love, love that oil. I'll also like to add a little bit of spearmint to Citrus Bliss, and that just smells like a mint vanilla creamsicle. It's a really nice scent when company's coming over. You can do two to three drops of an essential oil on the floor of a shower. When you shower, eucalyptus or breathe is a really nice one to do in the morning. So just put a couple drops there on the tile on the floor of the shower, and then it's like a nice little exhilarating steam, if you will, to really open up your sinuses, open up your airways. You can diffuse oils during your morning routine, again, to get you going. So maybe when you're getting the kids up and ready for school, you can diffuse that peppermint and lemon or peppermint and wild orange to get them going and just uplift your day. And again, like my sweet oiler was saying, and I notice it too, when you have diffusers going and we diffuse oils in our home pretty much 24 seven to just cleanse, purify the air. If we don't, or if I forget to fill it up, I notice a change in my mood and how I'm feeling. It's amazing how that can impact those things. And here's a little tip for you. I got this little watering pail <laughs> from the Dollar Tree and I fill it up to the top and then in the morning I just go around and I fill up all my diffusers at once and it works really well. Again, inexpensive, simple, and I love that it's got the spout so it makes it really easy to fill up all of the diffusers very quickly. So that's my little life hack for you on filling up your diffusers in your home. And you can even stick a few drops on a newspaper or paper towel or cotton ball and put it at the bottom of your trash cans to just help neutralize the smell that's going on. So there's a lot of ways to use our essential oils to support us. Here is a link to all of my resources. So you can screenshot this, you can have it on hand, but I have a website. There's my email address if you have questions or concerns. I'm on Facebook. If you would, if you're finding value in this, please go like the Facebook page. And I have a Facebook education group, the Learning with Dr. Laura group that you can go to. And I teach a virtual class once a month on different health and wellness topics that we share. I have a podcast with my bestie, Hillary LeMay, that is coming up. Our next one's actually on Wednesday, the 15th. So you can stay tuned for that. I'm on Instagram, a lot of the social medias you can follow me and also on YouTube. So you can go and subscribe and follow to learn more about those as well. And this was kind of perfect timing, but there's actually a Stadler diffuser sale going on. So I love the Stadler diffusers. I love my doTERRA diffusers as well. The Stadlers are very high quality too. They're actually designed in Switzerland and there is a buy one, get one free sale going on right now that ends at midnight tonight. So this is something that if you're looking for a long running diffuser, the Julia, for example, this is the diffuser that my husband Mark has in his office. It runs for 54 hours, which is kind of awesome. You don't have to refill it as often. The Mia runs for 10 hours, and then the Jasmine runs for 24. We will usually travel with the Jasmine diffuser, and it's one that I like to have in my bedroom because it runs for a full 24 hours. So that sale ends again at midnight tonight. I put some more information about it in our Learning with Dr. Laura group if it was a good time for you to stock up or Mother's Day presents or whatever that looks like. But you can go to the website bit.ly forward slash Dr. Laura diffuser and type in the keyword search bundle and it will pull these up and then make sure to use my coupon code Dr. Laura and you're going to get an extra 25% off. So you basically get a diffuser for free, which is kind of cool. So if you're in need of more diffusers in your home, this would be a great time to stock up. I was also going to show you, if you didn't know this, there is a shower diffuser, which is kind of cool. You can go to showerdiffuser.com and they were nice enough to gift us a coupon code for our tribe, which is Dr. Laura, and you can get 10% off of them. So if you're trying the putting a drop of essential oil on the shower floor and just having it open up your sinuses and you're liking that, there is a diffuser specifically for that too, if you were curious and wanted to learn a little bit more about that as well. And then if you're brand new to doTERRA, if you don't already 
have an account with doTERRA, if you're curious about this health and wellness lifestyle, there is a flash sale going on right now for Mother's Day. So our Healthy Habit Starter Kit is now 20% off. It's regularly $211. It is on sale for $158. This is gonna be just through Monday. So if you've been curious, if you're looking for a gift for mom or a gift for your health and wellness, and these are all of my favorite things, I'll pop in and do some more education on this specifically a little later. So stay tuned as part of this flash sale. But now is the time you can get my favorite vitamins and minerals digestive enzymes, probiotics, deep blue rub, which is great for anything painful, anything that's hurting. And then a couple of our favorite oils, a lot of them we've mentioned, lavender, lemon, on guard, frankincense, and balance. So this is a great way to overall your health and wellness. And we are actually doing a team challenge in our private Facebook group where we have a checkoff list and we're doing accountability and supporting everybody with that. And then when you get started, you'll actually get a second month of the vitamins and minerals for free. And these are huge. So if you're struggling with fatigue, not feeling well, um, lack of energy, sleep, digestive issues, this is really going to be a huge benefit for you and something that you can do there. Okay. So we need to talk about our giveaway. This is going to be for people in the Learning with Dr. Laura Facebook group. So you'll want to head over there. And what we're actually doing is two of my favorite diffuser recipe books. So I have two here. This one's diffuser recipes. This is from Elka over at Share Oils. And then we have another one that's Everyday Diffuser Blends. This is over 100 essential oil diffuser recipes. So there's 80 in here, 100 in here. So 180 diffuser recipes here. And to enter, all you have to do is post a comment below of what you found helpful from this class. Anything that you learned, anything that you might not have known before, and we'll put you into the drawing for this to be entered in to win these. So we will keep this open for a week. So until next Friday, and at 5 p.m. Central Time, we will have this in here. So post your learning comments, or if you were catching the replay, you can still enter as well. This is going to be for one U.S. viewer that's watching. We'll get these off into the mail for you so that you can try them out. It's kind of nice to have a little recipe book. So this will be going on through Friday, May 17th. And I just wanted to thank you guys again. Thank you so much for being here what we do, we provide a lot of education and support. Again, there's, there's many people out there selling a product. There's not as many people out there that are actually providing that one-on-one -on -one education and support. So if now's the time, if you've been looking to get started with oils, I would love to help support you. It would be my honor. We have a private Facebook community that is just for our oils family with, that we offer continued education and support in. We'll set up a one-on-one -on -one wellness call. That way I can teach you exactly how to use your oils, your supplements, whatever that is so that you feel really supported, how to dilute oils. We do follow-up calls to check in with you and see how you're doing with your health and wellness goals. And then you have access to a whole virtual library. So I teach here in this group once a month and the replays are up through the month but all of the content, all of the things that I've taught is open to our oils family there. So it is a big, big choice. It's a big decision when you choose somebody to get started with. You're kind of married to that person and it can be challenging to switch. So we do like to provide a lot of education and support to our people if that's something that you're looking for and you're just ready to up level your health and wellness. It can start with one small thing. Again, could start with getting a diffuser and diffusing some essential oils instead of candles or using an essential oil instead of perfume. It's small, sustainable changes over time that are going to change your health and wellness and change your life. And it would be my honor to help and serve you on that journey. So the replay is going to be up here until May 31st at 5 p.m. Central Time. So make sure that you take notes and watch it before it comes down. Thank you guys so much for being here. Again, if you start to implement some of these tips or things that you've learned from the class, please tag me on social media. I would love to see what you're up to, what you're doing, and how these classes are helping to support you. And I'll see you guys again next month for another health and wellness class. And as always, thank you so much for joining and being here. And I'm sending you guys each lots of love and light. Thanks for being here. Have a great weekend. Bye.